Everybody, it's Tyler here at the World Championships. Check in legendary 1690 Orbit. What an insane robot this absolutely is. Oh my goodness, the packaging that goes into this. We're gonna be walking through everything that makes this robot absolutely phenomenal. So much to talk about just from the mechanical side, but also the programming side. Or has been known for building just some of the most uh, awesome, robust programs out there, almost running autonomously as well too during their tele-op mode. So I can't wait to jump more into what they're doing. Of course, ISR champions looking for more here at World. So let's learn more about them coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Hey now, let's talk about so much that goes in this robot here. We're going to work bottom up. Talk to me about your swerve drive, what you're running, and we're going to go through this whole robot. Yeah, so basically this year we wanted our robot to be as small as possible, taking away from last year where we had a super complicated robot with not really any com competitive advantage. And this year we wanted it to be fast, small, simple, and do everything as well as possible. So our swerve drive, we have a custom swerve. And this year we iterated a lot of things. We changed the gear ratio, so now it's one to 5.4, something like that. And also we changed our top plates to be able to fit our whole shooter in between the swerves. So when the shooter is um, stowed, the whole robot is less than one foot. As you can see here, the shooter comes above this pulley right here, and it allows everything to be stowed super compact. And as I said before, under one foot, which makes the robot super cool, it looks awesome. And that's why we did it. Moving on to the intake. So we have a full under the bumper intake, so it's robust, so it, we won't have anything that leaves the bumper throughout the whole match almost. And we have we added this just before champs, we added these two um, two inch wheels that are powered by this bevel and they just center the note. So whenever we intake the note, even when it's on the side, just it pulls it in, intakes it, and all's good. So now I'll pass the mic on to Alone. We'll talk about the rest of the note. Yeah, so uh, this year, because we wanted to have a low CG as well as a single system that does both speaker and amp and potentially trap, we looked into stowing the shooter in between our swerve modules. Uh, in order to do that, we needed to compress the note to about 0.8 of its original width, which meant that we couldn't add spin reliably enough uh, to the shot. So instead, what we did is opting for four horizontal rollers instead of just two, uh, which means that the note will have two contact points with the shooter until the last possible moment, which gives the shots a lot of stability. Um, so, uh, when a note feeds into the shooter, it's going to be held in between uh, rollers that we call the trigger. They are powered by the same uh, motors as the intake. Uh, that's, uh, we can do that because our pivot point is concentric to this intake roller, which means that we can feed the notes into the shooter at basically any angle, all the way from travel mode to amp. I do want to ask you one thing. When you're designing the packaging like this small and this compact and things, like, did you have yeah. to give up anything when you were considering uh, making something this compact? Right at the beginning of the season, we made a decision to not compromise on like the main uh, scoring, which is uh, speaker and amp, and doing fast cycles for anything else. So this means that everything uh, that is done in the, uh, the end game, which is climb and the trap is built on top of the main systems. Um, also, another cool fact about, uh, about our shooter is that uh, at the beginning of the season, we used uh, regular aluminum tubes which were covered in uh, rubber coating, but the rubber inflated at high r RPMs, so we switched to vulcanized rubber, which is fused to the aluminum tubes, so it doesn't inflate at all. Um, now let's got, go back to the intake area and talk about our pivot. So uh, this year, we chose to use a uh, rack gear and pinion system to move our arm 
instead of a stru standard uh, sprocket and chain. Uh, this design was actually inspired by a 971's turret in 2017 and it's been working out uh, great for us. Uh, in addition to that, the entire system is custom made in our workshop. We manufactured it from steel on our CNC router. Uh, this means that we can make as many derivations as we want throughout the seasons. Uh, now, uh, let's move on to a pin new addition uh, that we installed just at the beginning of the CMP, our note deflector. Uh, so, our two losses leading up to the CMP were because of a note that got stuck beneath our shooter and caused us to play defense for the rest of the match. So, uh, after uh, finding the problem, we tried to solve it by preventing notes from getting into the, this position from the first place. As you can see, if a note gets stuck in here, it's really hard to eject it, but we found this solution that uses the plate that was already there to protect the PDH. What happened right here is these two servos had, um, had these spoon-like 3D prints on them. With, when we closed the shooter, they attached to it and pulled the entire thing up, and this just becomes a slide that no, the nodes can slide out of the robot easily. Moving on to our climb sequence right here, as you can see. So we wanted it to be as light as possible, as compact as possible, and just be in addition to our, shooter, to our main shooter and intake, and not add anything while still doing trap. So what we have here, here we have these carbon tubes and prints, and they open in a four bar way because of the, ra the ratio between the, um, the, the arc on this print and on this print. And then what happens is when we open it, the, so as you can see here, it opens straight up. And then because it's so light, and so we wanted the hooks to disconnect, so we just only need to worry about opening it. So we have magnets, and then the hooks just pull off when we start the climb. And then the trap, we didn't. We also didn't. We wanted to use the same shooter as everything else. So we have two linear slides that open up with just one servo, and then they open up with a constant force spring. And we also have the two torsion springs that open up these two handles, and then this, these fingers open up the trap door. So inside this print, we have a torsion spring that opens up this, and then we also have a constant force spring that opens up the linear slide. So everything is locked into place, and we just have one servo that opens up everything, and everything else is a completely passive and just opens up. We open the trap door, and we shoot in, and it's been working. Uh, so I'm Jan, and uh, our top priority this, this season with software was keeping it fast and simple for the driver. So what we do is that the driver only has to drive and when he wants to shoot he has to press only one button and the robot will take care of everything else so the shooter angle will be adjusted the swerve heading will be adjusted and the velocity of the wheels and how we are able to do that is with our three cameras we have a limelight over here and then an Ardu cam over there two Ardu cams one for note detection and one for tags they are both connected to an orange pie and they run photon vision and what we do with the tag cameras is that we, uh, we have our custom algorithm that based on attacks angles from the center of the frame. And this way we're able to localize ourselves on a field. So what we do for localization apart from the cameras is also our odometry and our gyro. And we get our estimated pose and we fuse everything in predicted to the time the samples were given. And we use a simplified common filter to get an error of less than a couple of inches. So our localization is what helps us actually shoot. Um, Another thing, uh, as I said before, our intake is also the trigger for our shooting. So it has to be able to respond super quickly to everything. And we stop the note in our, in our robot with, our, with, IR, with uh, two IR sensors. And we notice that when running our regular 20 millisecond uh, robbery cycles, when the code is running on 20 milliseconds, we sometimes miss an important IR sensor call, um, informing us of the node's position in the robot. So what we did is we use asynchronous programming and our intake runs on five milliseconds while the rest of the robot is running on 20 milliseconds. So, uh, and that helped us. Now we don't, uh, notes aren't flying out of the robot just. Um, another thing we do is uh, for our localization is 
that we have an algorithm that detects when the robot is uh, colliding or skid skidding on the field. We use the rubber wheels accelerometer to detect that. And when we detect that we're skidding or colliding, we know not to trust the odometry. So, um, and with that pose, we were able to uh, use a physics model and uh, calculate our wanted velocity for the shooter when shooting and uh, our wanted angle for the shooter. So, um, as said before, we like to say automated whenever we feel it's needed. So in our climb, we also have a couple of automations. Uh, we correct our robot's role when we're climbing, because we climb centered, but sometimes the driver doesn't see exactly where he is. So we correct our winch's positions according to the robot's role to stay stable. And we also shoot our trap in sync um, with the robot swing on a chain. Uh, and we were able to achieve all of this thanks to three apps we have developed in a team, and Omer will talk to you about them. Um, so we have three main apps uh, that we developed ourselves uh, to help us uh, debug and just uh, uh, with uh, more control of our robot. So this is the first one. We have our custom dashboard. It connects to our robots and shows us live data uh, from the matches. Um, so we have like a robot's position on the field and, and streams of the camera. Uh, we can choose autonomous and uh, like game pieces on the robots and uh, stuff like that. So that's the app uh, that uh, the, our commander actually uses in the game because we have one driver. Um, the second app we have is our uh, custom logger, uh, like we showed uh, in previous years. Um, because uh, the robot knows a lot about itself, we record a, a big CSV of uh, values from different sensors and subsystems uh, it's a big CSV just loading in the app and shows us a lot of graphs uh, that's from uh, a previous game of ours um, we can see here uh, just a straight match so we can debug ourselves um, the last app we have is our custom pathfinder um, this is our seven piece auto um, it helps us uh, uh, do really complex uh, paths really easily. Uh, we do it with uh, uh, kinematics and inverse kinematics, just physics, um, and the path is uh, um, calculated with the Bezier curves and Hermat splines. Um, um, another cool feature we have for Autonomous is the game piece detection camera right here, like Jan talked about earlier. Uh, we detect the nodes in autonomous, so when we uh, get to a, um, the midline to pick up a note, and we realize we, don't, we didn't pick up a note actually, so the robot turns 90 degrees, looks for a note, just that, then just leaves the motion profile that we uh, calculated earlier, uh, drives itself into the towards the note, into it, and then comes back to the path and shoots it and do the rest of the uh, auto path normally, just like nothing happened. Well, 69, we got to get you out to the match, but congratulations yep. on a phenomenal season so far. Incredible robot with us. We wish you best of luck here Thank at you. Championships, and thanks for telling us more about this incredible machine. Thank you so much. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.